My class on Star Trek was developed as a way to, I thought, to look at American history since the 1960s. Um, it is a phenomenon that has spanned our history since the mid-60s to almost to now the present. So it gave me an opportunity to look at some of the larger political, social, and cultural uh, issues uh, and see how Star Trek as a television show reflected those um, attitudes and values. So we begin in the 60s and look at issues of the Cold War. Um, so I do teach the class in terms of lecturing on what's going on at the time, Vietnam War, uh, civil rights, and then we stop and we watch an episode which <clears throat> attempts to deal or does reflect that, um, whether it's the Klingons and the, uh, and the Federation, kind of analogous to um, the uh, Russians in the, in, in the United States, or ones on race, and show how, um, how the television show is a kind of a window into looking at uh, the history of that moment um, in a different way, rather than simply going through a regular, le a regular lecture course. Now Gene Roddenberry, uh, as the creator of the show, consciously planned to make a, uh, a television show that dealt with what he thought were the important issues of the day. Um, he realized in the late 60s with the censors at the network that it was very difficult to put on a show that dealt with controversial or important moral and social issues. So um, science fiction uh, gave him a vehicle to do so by, in a sense, giving him plausible deniability. He could simply say, I know I'm making a show about uh, two individuals, one with a black face on the left side, one on the right face, who are trying to kill each other. Um, and it's set in the 23rd century. And therefore say, I'm not really making a show about race, when in fact is exactly what he was doing. And he knew it. Um, and the cast picked up on that quite quickly. Um, that, you know, he said this is what uh, art is for, for to challenge society. And he saw an opportunity here. Um, and uh, that is the premise behind his entire show. Yeah, the, the, cast, the, the cast of the original Star Trek series was groundbreaking because you didn't have shows that even had many African-American characters or any other kinds of characters um, and have them all in one uh, set, setting on the, on the, as the crew of the Enterprise was groundbreaking. Um, in the second year, he actually added Chekhov, the Russian, and he did that because this was, again, a gesture to what the growing cold, the Cold War to see that the, the United States and Soviet Union could someday overcome their differences and work together. And that's why he chose Chekhov, this, the, the Russian, to, you know, to take over as part of the helm of the, of the Enterprise. Well, I think Rod, Roddenberry was, Roddenberry attempting to do with Star Trek was to um, provide us a glimpse into a future in a sense that where uh, not only America but the world had overcome a lot of its current problems in the 1960s. Uh, there was obviously the war in Vietnam, there was racial strife, uh, diplomatic problems with the Soviet Union and other nations. And uh, Starfleet and the Federation is, represents, in a sense, like the United Nations. All the nations of Earth now have come together, plus other planets. Um, and the Enterprise is a peaceful ship. It is obviously, it's paramilitary, it does have war-making capacity in order to defend itself. But as the opening dialogue of the series or the uh, theme talks about peaceful exploration. And, uh, and again, I think they tapped into, uh, in the mid to late 60s, the, the fascination with space. I mean, we have our space program just a couple years away from actually making it to the moon, and they were tapping into this idea that um, perhaps uh, the, in the future we might see a better world. And so that humanity, in a sense, will overcome its problems and will survive. In my course, I mean, I spent about the first, roughly the first half on the original series. And what we do is we look at the themes, uh, some of the important social and political themes of the day. Cold War, race, gender, we'll talk a little bit about the hippies, um, and uh, religion and technology. And look at how Star Trek, the original series, kind of de dealt with these important social and cultural issues. Um, and then the second half of the course, we, we shift to the 80s and 90s and look at a lot of the late same themes and talk about how the show handled them very differently. You get a black captain in Deep Space Nine. Well, how do we get to that? Well, I talk a little bit about the changing nature of race in America in the 70s and 80s, the success of the Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement, multiculturalism in the 1990s. And so the crews of the more recent series are even more integrated than ever and they reflect the culture of our times. Um, so we look at a lot of the same things, how religion seems to be much more prominent in the recent series, because Gene Roddenberry was an admitted atheist. 
Um, and he, is, he didn't deal with religion much, and when he did do it in the original series, it was pretty negative. In the latter series, he had, particularly Deep Space Nine, he would already passed away. So his successors, realizing that America changed a lot when it comes to religion, we'd had a whole evangelical Christian movement of the 70s and 80s. You know, the show takes out a much, has a lot more religious uh, undertones. Um, and so we look at a lot of the same themes, but again, situating them in the historical context of the 1980s and the 1990s, and in a sense of how things have changed, and then how the show's changed along with that. Hippies in Star Trek, uh, Star Trek, of course, appealed to a younger audience, first and foremost. The part of the problem the series had was the demographics as they were um, studied at the time tended to lump large segments of the population into one demographic, 18 to 45. And that's part of the reason why Star Trek didn't do well. It didn't really do well among the older generation, I think, uh, partly because it was too, a little bit too different. But also, uh, for the younger ones, it, the idealism were really attracted to the, it was very attractive to them. And so, uh, in order to kind of keep in touch with the issues of the day, they did do an episode that was an analogous to the hippies, what they call the space hippies, who are uh, looking for Eden and the promised land and kind of looking for another reality, another place to live according to their values and ideas. Um, in the end, it's a tragic end and it's kind of an indictment uh, of the, the hippies to a certain extent, but it was a way in which Star Trek and actually other television shows at the time tried to capture the youth audience and you had to appeal to the interest that they had. Uh, this new movie really doesn't have a, any significant political or social message. Uh, and I think that's partly because of the approach which is to try to develop the characters. And I think to put in another layer would have been confusing and difficult for the, uh, you know, the production to do. Um, so this is a show that is largely about character development, uh, looking at the, uh, the younger, the youth of Kirk and Spock and the others and how they come together, the kind of relationships they develop. And so really it of course ends, the, this, the, the, the episode or the movie ends with them just really getting on the Enterprise. In a sense setting up for the subsequent movies and we now know there's at least one planned already. I imagine then they will probably have the opportunity to deal with more you know, important messages in that. But even that, that most of the films have tried to avoid that, partly because I think the films try to achieve, reach a wider audience. And, um, and they're really more about uh, you know, the look and the feel and the noise and the, and the ships exploding and that uh, in order to capture that larger audience. Television, they have you know, 22 episodes a year or sometimes. They have plenty of time to get into those kinds of uh, important issues. And even then, if you look at the 700 hours of, or 700 episodes of Star Trek since the original series through the last one, Enterprise, you know, probably 15 or 20 percent really deal with important issues in that. And a lot of them are just going to be interesting shows. So the movie itself um, doesn't seem to have any you know, a particular message um, other than it's trying to, in a sense, I think it does kind of reflect in some ways the hope and expectations of, a, of the United States at this time. I mean, the timing of it is very interesting, of course. You know, the production begins early last year when Obama's running for president, and so there are some very interesting things that, uh, that we might find out in the future exactly when we look at production records and that, how much they were thinking about uh, the upcoming election. And even if Obama hadn't won, that in a sense there seemed to be this energy in the country. And again, it re the optimism of that surrounded uh, and does surround Obama is very similar, of course, to the optimism of the mid-60s when Roddenberry created the original series. Well, teaching a class is very interesting because you get, I got a very wide range of interest in Star Trek. I had some, including a graduate student who probably knew as much, if not more than I did, could name episodes, and I've never been one to really memorize the name of episodes until I really got into this. I had other students who uh, were, they had been introduced to it through their parents. They watched it in their kids, like The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine. They were never real big fans, but they watched it and they knew some of the major characters. And I had about four or five who admitted they'd never seen an episode in their lives. And so, I mean, that was the funnest part, I think, was trying to get them to see it. I mean, it was difficult because you are talking about characters and ships, and so I actually had to start off with a quiz where I provided pictures and I said, you got to name the crew and what television series and, you know, a couple of prominent aliens that they should know and they had to identify them. And so kind of fun way to get them to think about, at least learn some of the basics of the show. I, I told them up front they didn't need to know anything about the show. Um, it helped, 
when I would drop a name or something like that, but I would introduce them to the various characters and the shows um, and uh, the episodes and kind of set those up, and we would all watch the episodes together. And so um, you get a very different, uh, you know, even the, the students who hadn't watched it much, they, they really got involved, and I think that some of them at the end, a couple of them at the end said they really enjoyed the class, uh, thought about Star Trek in a very different way, because I think Star Trek faces, as it still does to a certain extent today, this image of the Trekkie, the over-eager fanatic who dresses in his Starfleet uniform um, and, uh, you know, can name every alien an episode. And, you know, a lot of students didn't want to be associated with that. I mean, they even told me that, one of them told me that he wouldn't even tell his friend he was taking the course because he thought his friends were going to tease him. Uh, but, uh, you know, so overcoming some of that and to get him to see that it was not just a simple science fiction show. But it is a cultural phenomenon. I mean, the, the fact that anybody, even if they've never seen a show, know who Mr. Spock is. Um, it doesn't matter if they've ever seen an episode, they know the guy with the pointy ears and know his name. So I think that uh, the students, uh, you know, bring in, brought their own interest and their own background to the course. And uh, I think that diversity really did help because, it, you know, talking to people who just know it very well is fun, but it's really more interesting to get to see the others who don't and, you know, since catch on after a while. <laughs>